Okay, so I'm back with part two of my Big Ten order of finish. Um, part one saw me give you Ohio State one, uh, Wisconsin number two, Iowa number three, and Michigan State number four. I'm going to start with part two here and pick up with number five. Um, just to review, I think the Big Ten breaks down into the four tiers. Like I say, I think tier one definitely has Iowa, Wisconsin, and Ohio State. Tier two, I have Michigan State, Michigan, and Penn State. So I've given you Michigan State as my number four team, so I'll pick up with my number five team, who I think is going to be Michigan. Um, I know the seat's hot for Rich Rodriguez right now, and that's a tough situation for him to be in, but I really think with Michigan this year, uh, number one, I think that the three years Rodriguez has allowed um, his system to flourish a little bit. Um, I think last year, the best thing I can give you is like, for example, last year with Chris Martin, who was a defensive tackle. Um, Martin's 6'2", about 300 pounds, and Rodriguez really sees him as maybe a 3-4 defensive end. Um, Rodriguez really likes to play a 3-3-5 three, three, defense or a 3-4 a three, set. Um, and he really hasn't had the players yet to play that specific style of defense. Um, the 3-3-5 three, three, is a good defense to cover the spread offense, and it definitely, um, as, an, as a defensive scheme, allows you to take more advantage of your athletes which Rodriguez kind of did at West Virginia, and he had a lot of success with that. So I think, I think for the most part, you're seeing him transform the defense into more of his style. Um, the rest of the team, too, plays a little bit better. I know that they're going to have some uh, quarterback kind of controversy and that Rodriguez hasn't, hasn't picked a starter yet between uh, Denard Robinson and Tate Forcier. Um, I know that uh, it seems like the players might be behind Denard Robinson a little bit better, I think it doesn't matter. Last year when I watched both play, I was a lot more excited to see Robinson under center than Forcier. Um, not that it matters. I mean, Tate had a great year as, as a true freshman. I think him coming in being a true freshman quarterback at Michigan, I mean, you can't walk into uh, more of a pressurized situation than that. And he didn't do a bad job. Michigan faltered down the, down the stretch, losing a bunch of games, and wound up 5-7. Uh, and seven. But for the most part, I don't think they did a bad job. Um, so I think I think they're going to come in fifth. Um, the big question is, you know, can Rodriguez win enough games to save his save his hide, so to speak? And, and some people are saying eight, some people are saying nine games. I don't know. I, I don't think the three years is enough for him to really get in, especially since you're just now seeing the three four D. You're just now seeing a, a quarterback that is of his choosing that isn't um, that works in his system. Um, even now, they just got a quarterback. Uh, who is it? Devin Gardner, who uh, you know they're they're trying they're going to work in along with Robinson and and the others. And I think you know it just depends on how that's going to work out. I think as far as the skill positions, he's getting more players that way. Uh, his defense is setting up better. You know, for another example, last year where they're playing a four three with Brandon Graham as a defensive end, whereas you know Graham goes to the NFL and he's more of a three four linebacker, outside linebacker, kind of a rush linebacker in that set. And I think Rodriguez would have much preferred him to be uh, that outside linebacker instead of playing a 4-3 defensive end. Um, the two things I really think that's going to be critical for Michigan more so than anything is the idea of their first two games. I think playing UConn at home and then traveling to Notre Dame, I think those are going to be really tricky uh, for, for Michigan to win. If they can beat UConn at home, I think that, that sets, them up, sets them up well. If they lose to Notre Dame on the road, I don't think it's a huge loss. I think Notre Dame's going to be a lot better with Brian Kelly as head coach. But if they start 0-2, that could be enough to really send the season into a slide. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he'll get his eight wins. Uh, I think Michigan gets to a bowl. I think they give him another year. It just doesn't make sense to get rid of him this early because now he's he's recruited guys to play his specific system. If you get another guy that doesn't like playing a 3-4 or a 3-3-5 and you don't like a guy playing sp – or you get a guy not, not liking spread offense, then – you know, Michigan's got a truckload of players right now that are young that are going to kind of be playing out of position of sorts. So I think he does enough to stick around. I still think he's the right guy for Michigan. I think it is, is going to take a little bit of time. And really, you know, Michigan should be bowl eligible. It should get to eight, nine wins this year. And I really, really look out for them in 2011. I think that's when Rodriguez really gets to 10, 11, maybe even 12 wins, um, you know, if Ohio State loses quite a bit from this year's squad. Um, I, I think Michigan's really set up well. So that was my fifth team. My sixth team is Penn State. I know a lot of people are saying Penn State is going to be pretty good. Get to my notes here. Um, they're a top 15 team in the coaches poll, I believe. Uh, I don't see it happening. I mean, I, I do like Derek Moy as a wide receiver. I do like Evan Royce as a running back. Uh, they took a few hits on the offensive line. 
Uh, losing Daryl Clark at quarterback, I think, is a big deal. And I think when you see Penn State ranked as high as they are, I think what what people aren't taking into consideration is the fact that the Big Ten is bigger or is better overall relative to what it was last year. So you take a better conference while also getting rid of a, a big-time player and a big-time leader in Daryl Clark. I think the offense definitely suffers uh, from from coming in with, a, with either Kevin Newsom or or uh, is it uh, Matt McGloin or even the the rookie who was it Paul Jones? I think you really see uh, you're just going to see a fall off there. Uh, defensively, Penn State lost a truckload. I mean, they lost Josh Hall, Navarro Bowman, and Sean Lee as run, as linebackers. They lose all their linebackers. They lose Jared Odrick, who was a first round pick in the NFL draft as a defensive tackle. I mean, they do have Jack Crawford coming back at defensive end, who's who's a, who's a quality player. But I don't think you can lose that much defensively and and be able to overcome. Um, they have a rough they have a rough go at it. They play road games at Alabama, at Iowa, at Ohio State. I mean, right there, I don't see how how Penn State wins any of those games. Um, I think the Temple game could be tough. Um, they also play Michigan. They play Michigan State. Um, Indiana might not be an easy game for them if 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 Indiana is rolling offensively and Penn State hasn't kind of ironed out some of the the wrinkles in their defense. Indiana's got a, a team that could really score and score a lot. So even though you know Penn State's still in that tier too. But the schedule doesn't really work out well for them. Uh, the The conference is stronger. They took a ton of losses on D, and they lose their starting quarterback, who who was a great the first team, you know, all Big Ten quarterback. So I think I think that's just too much in uh, in Joe Paterno's you know fifty thousandth year as head coach to overcome, especially when you've got teams as quality as Ohio State, Iowa, Wisconsin, even Michigan State's going to be better. I think Michigan's going to be better, like I like I just said. And I think that puts uh, Penn State at number six. Um, that takes us to my my third tier, which is our seven, eight, nine, and ten teams. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be surprising here at seven. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Indiana as my number seven team. Now that, that seems a little bit optimistic for the Hoosiers given their recent success. But here, here's the reason I'm gonna do it. I think I think offensively they're gonna be good enough to score a lot of points. Ben Chapel can make all the throws. He's a senior. Um, I think he's got plenty of weapons at wide receiver with Tandon Doss, DeMarlo Belcher, uh, Terrence Turner, um, Max Dedman at tight ends, a big target, athletic. Um, the offensive line, even though they took some losses like Roger Saffold at left tackle, I think they'll be okay. And, and, and it, the, the offensive line's big. Um, you know, they're going to be able to match up well. And I think Ch- I think Chapel can make all those throws. Um, the problem with Indiana, is, there's two. One is Darius Willis has to stay healthy. Um, he can be a home run hitter at running back, but he's got to stay healthy. We saw him be able to break off quite a few runs against Michigan last year. That showed us a lot of uh, his ability to be a big-time playmaker. And I also think uh, the other thing they have to worry about is defense. They just lost a, a tremendous amount. Uh, you're talking Jamie Curlin, Greg Middleton at defensive end. You're talking Will Patterson at linebacker, uh, Matt Mayberry at linebacker. You're talking safety Austin Thomas. I mean, that is a tremendous amount of quality play playmakers for Indiana from a defense that still gave up 30 points a game. Um, if, if you're replacing guys that are that are good defensive players that um, still were able to give up a lot of points, you know where do you go from here? I, I think, but I, on the on the other hand, I think it has to be a situation in Indiana where they're a little bit desperate. If they can't win this year with that type of offense, you know I don't know if they're going to ever be able to to get an offense where you have a quarterback can, that has as strong as Armish Chapel, a running back that has as good as Darius Willis, and receivers really as good as Doss, Deadman, uh, Turner, and Belcher. I, I mean, I you know, if they, they should be able to score 30, 35 points a game, even even against good defenses. And if they're able to do that, then they should be able to stay in some games. So I'm going to go with Indiana at 7. Uh, you know, it's a little bit... Uh, a little bit maybe optimistic for the Hoosiers, but I think I think they can pull that off uh, to a degree and, and, and put up a pretty good season. Um, if they don't, I'm not sure they ever will. I mean, this has been the, the case with Indiana for a long time, and it's just uh, a situation where they have to really capitalize at a point where they have the players to make some noise, but they have to... Um, you know the, the Big Ten's a tough conference. They got they definitely got to take care of home, and they've got to beat teams they're supposed to beat. They've got to go four and zero non conference. They've got to beat Illinois. They got to beat Purdue. Teams they should beat. Um, they don't have Minnesota on the schedule. They got to beat Northwestern at home. They do that. You know they can win seven or eight games, and, and it's not out of the realm of possibility for Indiana to have 
a, a crazy season where they maybe win nine. You know, I, I don't think they're going to beat Ohio State. I don't think they're going to beat Iowa. I don't think they're going to beat Wisconsin. But if they, if the offense is running on full cylinders, they could win potentially the other nine games. Even even against Penn State, if they, if they don't iron out the wrinkles, because that is a, uh, even though theoretically it's a neutral game, it's in Maryland, so it, it's a road game for Indiana. But maybe they they get a shot. So my number eight team, I'm still in tier three. I'm going to go with Northwestern at eight. Um, you know, they lose quarterback Mike Kafka, who is a, a huge playmaker for them. But Dan Persa comes in to take over. Persa's been in the system for a long time. Uh, he supposedly is a better runner and can pass as well as Kafka does. I mean, that's just going to be, if he can come in and fill those shoes immediately, uh, Northwestern's going to be really well off. Um, you know, they, they, they return seven guys on offense. I think R.B. Fields is going to be better as a runner. Um, they got some, you know, they got some weapons on the outside they can kind of use. The offensive line should be okay. Uh, defensively, they lose a little bit, um, but they still have you know a lot of guys that are coming back. Quentin Davy, Nate Williams are two linebackers that that were big time tacklers last year. And the thing with the defense is Pat Fitzgerald's the head coach, and Fitzgerald to me, um, I don't think you can put him. No one's going to sit and say that he's as good a coach as Trestle or even Ference maybe uh, in the Big Ten. But I think, and I think part of that is that you know Northwestern hasn't won a Big Ten championship. Northwestern hasn't been to a Rose Bowl under. Uh, Fitzgerald, but I think you know I think they could easily get there if you look at you know what Fitzgerald's done so far as, as such a young head coach and the way Northwestern's battled. I mean, we saw them last year uh, get down big to Indiana. They came back and won. You saw them get down to Iowa, come back and beat Iowa. Uh, there's a lot of fight in, in in Northwestern, a lot of fight, and I think you know this year's another year where they could potentially uh, you know win some games. I don't think they're offensively as explosive as Indiana. And I don't think they're, you know, good enough as the top six, but I, I definitely think they have enough um, coaching acumen, if you will, and enough playmakers to definitely be in the seven to ten range. And on the top side of that, uh, if Indiana falters, I definitely think Northwestern's the best of the seven to eleven teams. And I think, uh, you know, I, one thing with Northwestern's that's tough is, as the conference gets better. Northwestern's always going to deal with academic issues and recruiting. I mean, sometimes they might be able to get a, a good player here and there, but for the most part, it's got to be a guy that's able to find inefficiencies in the recruiting process and coach up the players he has to make them better than what they might have been as high school players coming out. So it's all about making players better in that system. So I, I think what hurts Northwestern and what hurts Fitzgerald a little bit is, again, the conference getting better relative to years past. Uh, the Big Ten's been down a little bit recently, but with other teams getting a lot better, uh, Northwestern's going to kind of fall, even though there might not be appreciable differences between them and prior year squads other than the other teams in the conference are getting better. Um, now, whether that means that Northwestern kind of falls um, you know, down the conference ladder, I mean, I think you definitely can make that case. Um, but as long as teams like Indiana, Illinois, Minnesota, Purdue kind of keep underperforming, uh, the Northwestern's going to be able to get uh, bowl eligible. So I think, you know, the, the schedule's not too bad for them. Uh, the non-conference, they should blow through that, 4-0. Um, you know, they get home game, you know, then they play Minnesota in the home games against Purdue Michigan State. I mean, it, it, Northwestern could find, find, find themselves 7-0 to begin the season. So there's definitely a situation where Northwestern could capitalize on it. I'm going to still go with, uh, with them being 8th behind Indiana at seven. So this is part two again. Uh, I'll give you the rundown of my top eight, which I have as one Ohio State, two Wisconsin, three Iowa, four Michigan State, five Michigan, six Penn State, seven Indiana, and eight Northwestern. And the next one I'll do, part three, will be teams nine through 11. So we're going to get an order, some order, between Purdue, Illinois, and Minnesota. So hope you guys are enjoying this, and I'll do part three here pretty soon.